He expressed warnings to others of a force so menacing and unbeatable, it could only be described as supernatural. He called them ghosts. Hello there, Sir from 17 once again. This is the final video of my Call of Duty Ghosts Veteran Difficulty video walkthrough. We're on mission 18, the penultimate moment of the story. It is entitled The Ghost Killer. And in it, we get to play as Carl and we have to finally take down the dastardly Patrick Swayze. Only that's a completely different thing. So instead, you're still playing as the same guy and you're on a big weird train that's rocking left and forth. Left and forth? Not even right English. Left and right, back and forth, and making aiming an utter bastard. So here's a, a little swan song memo to the the game developers. Nobody likes aimers getting swayed. They just don't. We don't like ambient sway. I don't care how realistic it is. I don't care how tired his arms are. I don't care if he's got premature Parkinson's. We don't like sway. No one likes sway. I bet Muhammad Ali would tell you he doesn't like sway. It's just absolutely tragic that it happened to somebody so fucking gifted physically. It's not cool. And on first person shooters, it's even worse. You know, it's just so annoying. And combine ambient sway that the game already has, and then add in environmental sway. So, because the train is shaking and it, and it abides by the laws of physics, it's also shaking us, the shaking our aim. Yet when we were in space, we were completely suspending reality to do ridiculous James Bond-esque things. And yet when we're back on land, we're, they're forcing all these laws of nature back on us, which is really frustrating. Because <laughs> there's two sequences on this train that are really tricky, where you will die quite a lot if you get unlucky. And the main reason you might die is A, because the cover is non-existent, and B, because when you're trying to shoot the person, your aim decides to paint a rainbow. It's really, really irksome, is the best way of putting it. So the first difficulty is, is coming up. There's two helicopters that are about to assail the train, and you have to kill both of them, but the cover, as I've mentioned, is not great, and you get railed really quickly too. So try and kill all the people hanging out of the chopper, and by the time you've killed all the people, thanks to the lovely aim adjust and the aim sway, you'll probably be, have put enough bullets into the machine to bring it down. So I use these kind of pistons slash suspension anchors to the railed as cover. They're not you know, perfect. I've died just like laying down between them and things. It happens, it's just something that's gonna, you know, piss you off, but you'll get past it eventually. But it's playground rules for the most guys. Just put a piece of geometry between you and the person, hide behind the car so your friend can't dig you, and you should be fine. And then when you push up onwards, there's gonna be a sequence where a ton of guys start mantling up onto the, the roof of the train using grappling hook things. And look at my aim here. My aim's going everywhere, man. Max sensitivity, crazy aim sway, lots of dudes with perfect aim. It's just bad news. <laughs> but luckily enough, you, you can go prone and they don't seem too keen on grenading you, which is very convenient for us. And every single part of the next section is dangerous, and I don't know why. It's almost like the aim and the damage of the enemies is a little higher than it's been in the game. Because as I was pushing up here, I died once before I managed to get into the cover that's just two yards in front of me. I said two, it's maybe about six yards. So be very careful on this point onwards because there's no checkpoint just yet and I got absolutely obliterated for no real reason other than the game decided it was time I died. And yeah, this is really tricky, this part. I think I died about three or four times on the, the helicopter, so I'd say this is the second hardest part of the game. Uh, mainly because if you get unlucky on that defending the hacker dude, it's a nightmare. That was me mocking the aim sway again. You can generally tell when I'm getting frustrated because I do things like that. And I don't mind, you know, having to put up with environmental hazards. I don't mind having to put up with, ex you know, extenuating circumstances and stuff. It's just anything that affects my ability to aim, it's, it's just not fun. You know, I would rather be punished because my aim was bad rather than you manhandle my aim to make it bad. That to me just kind of seems cheesy. But at the same time, if your aim wasn't affected at all, would it be weird, this sequence on the train? You know, I, I didn't think space was weird and I was firing bullets in a vacuum. You know, <laughs> I was watching fire even though there's no oxygen in space, so how fire happens, I can't quite think. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't question that, I just did it and had fun. It's an interesting thing. 
you know the and I don't really know what it is it's a disconnect in the brain it's, it's like media awareness when you look at something and you know it's not real but you can't quite tell how it's been done for me that's a little bit less because I've been taught the mechanics of how it was done because I studied a digital film course at university so a lot of the tricks and a lot of behind the scenes and behind the curtains and the magic is lost to me because I already know how it's done and in fact can do it myself but I was watching a program called Gogglebox the other day and the premise of this program for anybody who hasn't seen it sounds pretty much as like a last desperation attempt at doing something with television now that they've run completely out of ideas and it just sounds like the most mundane and, and dullest thing ever it is watching people watching TV that has been on for the last week so you're watching their responses to the television that has been you know on that week and it sounds dull and stupid but it's actually pretty funny and silly but there was a section on this where they were watching I think is it is it Richard Hammond the guy from Top Gear he was on a program called Building a Planet and it was a science program going into to, I assume building planets I didn't see it and most of it was computer effects it was all green screened it showed him climbing this ridiculously tall tower it was all green screen it was all fake and these people who were watching it not there was I think one of them out of every family displayed that showed that it was you know not real none of them even doubted it they were all just saying oh I couldn't climb up that it's too high and it just goes to show the the lack of awareness that some people have with with TV and things that they watch on television and it's one of the many dangers of television the fact that it can be twisted and sculpted and, and manipulated in so many ways and people just don't have the the media savvy to understand that they're being manipulated it's why marketing's so effective it's why we live in this you know capitalistic country and, and economy but my mum's like that you know, she watches those adverts where the cars turn into robots and they start dancing and she, she always makes a, a very naive but innocent comment of isn't it good how they do that? And she's not meaning isn't it good how they use a computer program to, to create this model and make it dance and they make it so realistic that you can't tell the difference. I think there's a part of her that actually thinks that these cars can dance and to her that's just magic. Because it is magic. Because we all know cars can't fucking dance. <laughs> and it's just being media smart and this program really reinforced just the amount of folks that don't have that critical eye because we're so used to believing everything we see you know these these might be the same people that believe everything in the newspaper is true or everything the news tell you is the way that it happened you know it's it's a lack of critical thinking and it's not a, an offensive lack it's not them being malicious it's just the the ignorance of literally not knowing and uh, I just think that's interesting but we're coming up to the very end of the guide here, guys. There's really nothing left for me to help you through. Only thing left here is going to be a bunch of expositional stuff, and I'm probably going to trim that out. As you drag your brother up this beach after the big, you know, climactic train moment. But there is the achievement. There's the, the final level achievement, the ghost killer. There is the you've earned it for earning your mask, which is for beating the game on the hardest difficulty. So thank you for watching. And as always, folks, you take care now.